Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Legend Academy. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing the first couple of rounds, and then I'll fast forward to the first round in the second semester, which is about halfway through the game. Now, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one in the future, then please go to johngetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with perks like watching some videos early and advertisement free, as well as voting on which of those videos are made. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. The other thing I'd like to mention is the fact that I'm filming with a prototype version of the game today, so the art and components that you see here will not necessarily match those in the final version. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. Each player is in control of a legend, and we are in an academy, where thematically, each time we play, we are going to go through a different classic story. Each of these stories are split into a first and second semester, and when you go from one to the other, you actually flip these pages over and reveal a new map that all of the legends will be playing on. For the story we are playing through today, we have Gulliver's Travels, and it is worth noting that this is not necessarily a campaign-style game, so you can play through any of the available stories each time you play Legend Academy. Now this is a very card focused game because on each player's turn they're going to play the cards in their hand out onto their stamina line and they can add more stamina cards to play more cards overall. Now as you go through the game you're going to be able to learn and when you do that you can add new cubes onto your board which will let you add more powerful cards into your overall deck and you also have the ability of adding different transparent cards that you slide into the sleeves of your cards to improve their overall effects. Now this is a fully competitive game, so you are trying to win by yourself, but you can ask for help from your opponents. Each player has one token from each opponent, and on their turn they can flip these over in order to get the benefit of that opponent, and then that opponent also gets a benefit because they helped out the active player. Now that opponent cannot say no for giving this help, but since they get a benefit out of themselves, they usually are happy to do so. Now once a player is done with their turn, the next player can go, and the previous player can then upgrade their cards as well as add new cards into their overall deck. Once all players have taken four turns, we will move it into the second semester, and then all players will take four more turns, and after that, the player with the most victory points will be the winner. Now there are special ways to get victory points for each of these different semesters, as well as other ways to get victory points, which I'll describe as we are playing. And I think at this point, let's now begin the game. Now for this tutorial, we are going to play as Alice. Well, let's start things off with the first semester of Gulliver's Travels, and the first thing that we do is read the text on this card. Students, welcome to your first year at Legend Academy. Here you will study, grow, and retell the stories to the world, for if we forget the past, we will suffer the same fate in the future. This year, we will be studying our way through the old adventure novel Gulliver's Travels. In the first semester, we will find ourselves stranded on an island inhabited by tiny people called Lilliputs. These Lilliputs are the size of your thumb, and from their perspective, you are terrifying giants. You will need to make your way around the island and talk to all of the castles and convince them that you are not the enemy. All the while, the Lilliputs are swarming you, shooting you with arrows, and trying to tie you down. In the first semester, being charismatic will be helpful when talking to the Lilliput castles, so try to make your way to the Charisma classroom. The second semester will be about dealing larger attacks, so you may want to start preparing for that as well. Open your textbook to page 1, and let's begin. Well, as I said, we are playing as Alice, and we have the professor's favorite token in front of us, which means we get to take the first turn of this round. Now, what we can do is look at our hand of cards, and we always start with six cards unless we have some other effect that changes that. Now, as you can see, we have a variety of cards in our hand, but the first one to point out is this stamina card. Now, out here on the table, we have a stamina card already played, and this is always going to be in play. It never goes into our deck. Now, the stamina cards are important because whenever you play a non-stamina, stamina card, you have to put it down so that it covers up half of one of these cards. So what that means is with this one stamina card here, we could play two cards and then we won't have any other room for cards. However, because we have a stamina card in our hand, we can actually place this down so that it half covers up one of the other cards. And now we have one, two, three locations to play the other cards from our hand. So I think we may as well start by playing this one out. And now we can play at least three more cards. There might be other ways to actually increase the number of cards that we play through various other effects. 
Now, technically, the first thing we're supposed to do during our first turn of a semester is place our character figure out. So let's go ahead and do that, even though we've already put the stamina card down. So let's focus out on the map, and we can place this down into a starting location, and those are denoted by this book symbol here. So there are three different starting locations we can begin at, and I think we want to go right over here. Now we can continue on with our turn, and we can play cards into our stamina row. We could also use equipment that we have in front of us, and we can also ask for help from our opponents. I think the first thing that we want to do is play this move card, and we can put it down onto any empty spot on our stamina row. The specific location on this row does not matter. In this case, we'll just work from the left to the right. So let's focus on the card, and it says we can move a number of spaces equal to our endurance level. Now, our endurance level is going to be the number of endurance icons we have it showing up on all of the cards in our stamina row, plus the number of green endurance cubes that we have on our player board. At the moment, this is the only card on our stamina row, and it does have that endurance icon, so we are currently at one endurance. And then when we focus down here, you'll notice we have a red strength cube, but no green endurance cubes. So that means our endurance is currently one for the one endurance icon we have on this stamina row. This means if we continue to play cards with that endurance symbol, the previously played endurance cards will add to the endurance value for those future actions. Well, our endurance is one, so we can move once, and when you move, you go onto an adjacent location, and you are never allowed to move into these red areas, and you are also never allowed to move onto enemy tokens, which in this case would be the Lilliput that are all over the island. Now, I think let's move onto this spot here, and then let's play this interact card. That has the charisma symbol in the top left, and it says we can interact, and the range is equal to our charisma level. Once again, we are going to count up the number of charisma symbols that we have on our stamina row, plus the number of yellow cubes that we have on our player board, because yellow matches up for charisma. Unfortunately, we don't have any yellow cubes, so our charisma level is 1, and that means our range is 1 for this interact action. So, let's once again focus out on the board, and as you can see, with a range of 1, that means we can interact with anything on our location, or 1 hex away. Now, there is this treasure spot, and that is where we are going to be interacting, but before we get to that, I'd like to talk a little bit about the objective up here, as well as the tasks associated with the first semester of the game. Now, as you can see, this objective says we have to interact with three castles. Down below, it says once we have interacted with a castle, it can no longer attack us, and we put a token on that space to remind us. Now what this means is if at the end of the semester, which is going to be four turns for each player, we have not interacted with three out of the four castles, we are going to lose 30 victory points. So we definitely want to make a point of interacting with these castles if we can, but unfortunately this castle is one, two, three, four range away, and our current interact has just a range of one. If we look over here, there are specific tasks for this semester. It says if we interact with a castle, which is obviously something we want to do three times, we will gain 10 victory points for each time we do that. That means if we interact with three castles, that will be 30 points total. And again, if we don't interact with at least three, we lose 30 victory points. So that is definitely something we have to keep in mind. And we only have four turns to make this happen. The other task available for the first semester of Gulliver's Travels is defeating Lilliput. And every time we defeat one of them, we gain five victory points. Now let's come back to our interact. And obviously we are not interacting with this castle, but we are interacting with this treasure spot here. Now, every time we interact with the treasure spot, we can either gain five gold coins or we could purchase one equipment from the market. Now, we start the game with 10 coins, so we have enough to purchase any of these. As you can see, the costs are three, four, five, and five for the four equipment that are currently available. When we focus in a little bit, you can see that Dracula's Cape is an equipment that says every time you defeat an enemy, you draw one card. So that is a nice additional effect that you get for defeating those enemies. Next up, this water canister is simple. It just adds two to your endurance. And as we've already seen, endurance lets us move around. And that is certainly a nice, flexible thing to have. After that, there is Huck Finn's backpack. It says your maximum hand size is now 12. Normally, you can only have eight at most cards in your hand, but if you have this equipment, then you can hold up to 12, which really increases the number of options that you have and increases the effectiveness of certain abilities that let you draw lots of cards from the top of your deck. The last equipment available is Don Quixote's helmet, and it says you reduce the enemy attack's damage by one. Now, whenever you suffer damage, you simply lose victory points equal to that amount of damage, so this will cause players to lose less damage when the Lilliput out there on the island try to attack us, and I'll describe how that works in detail later on in the tutorial. For now, I think the best one for us is going to be this water canister. That has a cost of four, so we can spend four out of our ten coins. 
and then take this water canister and then we can immediately refill the market with a new piece of equipment. And this is leather boots. That says for cost of nine coins, you may move onto spaces with Lilliputs and if you do, they take one damage. Remember, normally you cannot move onto spaces with Lilliputs because they are enemies, but these leather boots let you get around that. So we can place the water canister in front of us and we now have two pieces of equipment. It's worth noting you are never allowed to have more than four pieces of equipment. So if you get a fifth, then you have to take one of yours and put it into your backpack, which means it's effectively out of the game. Now, as you can see, we started the game with a piece of equipment and that is associated with us as Alice. This is White Rabbit and it says once per turn, you may pay two of your gold and then you may draw three cards from the top of your draw pile. Now, when you do this, you simply flip it over as a reminder that you can only do it once per turn. Well, our interact action is done, and at the moment, we have a rest card, a little mad card, and an attack card in our hand. So that is effectively two strength-based cards and one wisdom-based card. And this rest lets us draw a number of cards equal to our wisdom level. Now, this would be our first wisdom card played to the stamina row. So that is one wisdom, and we don't have any wisdom on our board. So if we played this, we would essentially draw one card from the top of our deck. We can look at these attacks, and it says for the attack card, we can do damage equal to our current strength level, and as you can see here, it shows we would just damage one adjacent location. If we did that, our strength would be 1 plus 1 for this red cube, or 2, and that is the amount of damage that we have to do to defeat the Lilliputs. They have 2 health, so doing 2 damage would be enough to defeat them. So that is just one of the options that we have available to us. But I think at this point, maybe let's try to find some more options by using our White Rabbit Equipment card. We really would like to interact with that castle, and we don't have any interact cards in our hand, and we know there is one more in this deck, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six cards. So if we draw three, we might draw more stamina cards to let us play more cards, and there is a pretty good chance we'll bump into that other interact card that we could then use to interact with the castle that we are close by. So let's use White Rabbit, which does mean we have to spend two of our money, and now we can draw three cards from the top of our deck. All right, we can now continue to play cards, and because we pulled the stamina card, let's play that down to then have two more cards that we can play. It's worth noting if we played another card to block all of the stamina spots, we cannot play another stamina card because this must be played onto an empty half. So before we do that, we can put this one out, and then I think we should use this move card. That one lets us move a number of spaces equal to our endurance level, and that is going to be one plus one plus two more for this water canister. That means our overall endurance level is four, and this move card will let us move four times out on the map. Now we know that our goal is to try and use this interact card that we just drew to interact with that castle, and this interact will have a range equal to our charisma level, and when we play this out, we will then have a charisma level of two, so this will have a range of two. So realistically, we just need to get within range of two of this castle, and we can easily do that with a move of four. So let's focus in, and I think we will just move two times instead of the full four. That puts us within range of this castle, as well as potentially range of these little puts to do some damage later on on our turn. So let's come back here, and we have one more card slot on our stamina row. And before we play our next card, I would like to talk about our assignments. As you may have noticed, every player has two of these in front of them, and you will always start each turn with two of these. And if you do the requirement that's listed on it, you will gain the associated victory points. Now this one says we will get 15 victory points if we spend 12 coins. And so far we have spent 6 coins, but we only have 4 coins left. So unless we gain some coins, there is no way we're going to be able to spend all 12. So unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to complete this assignment. And then this one says play two strength cards in order to get 10 victory points. Now at this moment, we have played two endurance cards and one charisma card, and we have two strength cards in our hand and one slot left over here. But technically, there is a way for us to play both of these because we can ask Robin for help, which will let us remove one of these cards. Now with that in mind, I think let's talk a little bit more about asking our opponents for help. When we focus over here, you'll notice we have a token for each of our opponents, and each of them has a token from us. Now, this Ask Robin for Help tile says we can discard a card from our stamina sequence, and then we flip this over to show that we have asked Robin for help already. 
Now you can only ask for help once per turn, and you can only ask for help when it says ask for help. And you will flip all of these back to the ask for help side once you have used all of these. So that means if we ask Robin for help on this turn, then on our next turn, we could only ask Red for help because we would have already asked Robin. And once we ask Red for help, both of these will flip back, letting us use either of these on a future turn. Once again, you can only ask for help once per turn now. Well, our other option is asking Red for help, which would let us move three spaces, although it seems like we are moving just fine already. So I do think let's go ahead and ask Robin for help right now. So we can discard a card from our stamina sequence. And I think in this case, we will discard move and that will go into our discard pile. After that, we have to pause our turn because now Robin is going to gain a benefit because we asked them for help. Now they have three different options. The first is they can draw one card from the top of their deck and put it into their hand. The second option is they can move their figure two times out on the map. And the third option is they can gain three victory points for helping. So Robin has a choice to make between those three, although their figure isn't actually on the map, so they can't move. So they could either draw one card or gain three victory points, and they've decided to go for the three victory points. Once again, you can easily remember these options because you gain one card, two move, or three victory points. All players start with zero points, so Robin now has three, even though it's technically our turn. So let's focus back over here and we have two card slots that we can fill, which means we could do two of these attacks in order to complete our play two strength cards assignment to get those 10 victory points. Now, the other thing that we could do is play the interact card, which I was talking about before in order to interact with that castle. That will get us 10 points as well. And it also means we could move away from that castle towards the other ones. Remember, we only have four turns to complete that objective of interacting with three castles. So I think interacting with one of them on this turn is probably going to be a good thing. And with that in mind, I think we are going to play the interact card down. So this means we can interact at a range equal to our charisma level, which is currently two. And when we look out here, this castle is two spaces away. So we can interact with that castle and then place one of our tokens next to it to show that this happened. And that's important because later on in each of the rounds, the castles will potentially attack, but they will not attack a player who has interacted with it. That means we don't have to worry about this castle attacking us. And now we will gain 10 victory points for interacting with it. This also means we only have to interact with two more castles in order to complete this objective and not lose 30 victory points. Well, we have one slot left, and I do think we should attack once. This one right here says we will attack, and it will be a single adjacent spot, and the damage we do is equal to our strength, and we do have one red strength cube on our board. That means if we played this, our strength would be two, and the Lilliputs have a health of two, so that would be enough to defeat them. The other attack card that we have is a little mad, and we actually pick this one up at the start of the game by putting this cube down. You can see it says a little mad, and that let us pull that card out of our backpack and into our hand. Now, this is a stronger card. It lets you do five damage at a range equal to your strength level. But at the moment, I don't think we need to play this because we have a valid attack with this one. So we can hold on to this and potentially use it on a future turn instead. So let's play this attack. And now we will do damage to a single adjacent area equal to our strength level, which is currently two. So let's focus out here. And this little put is within range. And once again, we can see their health is two and their damage is two. And we'll talk more about them damaging us later on in the tutorial. This means we can defeat this Lilliput. And if you remember from before, the task for defeating Lilliput says we will gain five points. So by doing that, we have gained five points, bringing us up to 15. Well, at this point, I think our turn is done. We don't have any more equipment we could potentially use because this water canister has an ongoing effect. We can't ask for help again because we already did that and we don't have any open slots over here on our stamina row. So with that in mind, the first half of our turn is done which means we can now move on to the second half of our turn where we go to class. Now it's important to note that when playing with other players, at this point, the next player in clockwise order can start playing cards and taking their actions while you go to class just to speed up the overall gameplay. But of course, in this video, we are seeing things one at a time. So let's go ahead and go to class before we see what Red decides to do on their turn. Now, the first thing that we do is gain new assignments. We always draw two from the top of this deck and then we have to keep two in front of us. 
Now it's worth noting that we could potentially have completed both of these assignments. And if that had happened, we would have none in front of us and we would simply keep both of the new ones we just drew. Or if we had completed one of these, but not the other, we would keep two out of these three. And obviously in this case, we did not complete any, which is maybe not a good thing, but either way, it does leave us with four options from which we can keep two. Well, the two new ones say we have to play two endurance cards to gain 10 points, and the other one says we can use three equipment actions in order to gain 20 victory points. We only have one piece of equipment right now, so I think this one might be hard, and with that in mind, I don't think we should keep this one, but we should keep one of these. Now, spending 12 coins is quite a lot, especially considering we currently only have four, but I am thinking about potentially upgrading into the entirely bonkers card, which is a good way for us to gain more money money, and I do hope to show you what that card looks like soon. This next one over here we could have actually completed on our turn. It says play two endurance cards, and we did, but since we have played both of those endurance cards, it means we are less likely to have those as options for our next turn, so I think maybe this is less good than the two that we had for our first turn of the game. Yeah, I think we'll go with these. Also, the spend 12 coins is worth 15 points instead of 10, so if we work towards that, that might end up being quite good for us. So we can place these into a discard pile, and now we have to come over here and choose a class to attend. As you can see, there are four different classes around this board, and there is a fifth option here in the middle where you actually skip class. Now, each of these has different effects on them, and when you go to any of these options, you place one of your tokens down onto an available spot. Now, these four in the middle can only have one of these tokens, and when you go onto one of these, you spend the associated number of coins, and then you take this transparent upgrade card, and you slide it into a card that's currently in your hand, or on your stamina row. Now, I'll talk about how that works in more detail soon, but I don't think we are going to be going onto any of these four in the middle. Technically, we do have four money, so we could go over here, but I don't think that's what we want to do in this moment. Instead, I think let's go to the Charisma Classroom. When we do this, we can place our token down onto any empty desk, and obviously there are six options, as you can see, and then we gain the bonuses that are shown there. Each of these card icons lets us take one of the associated type of card from our backpack and put it into our deck. When we do that, we also have to put a matching cube down onto our board. So if we went here, we could take two cards. If we went there, we could take one card, and then we could do two upgrades. The way the Charisma upgrade works is you are going to take one of these transparent cards for each of the arrows, and you will slide it into the sleeve for one of the cards in your hand or on your stamina row, and it will add effects. In this case, all of the Charisma effects will add an interact action, and the side that it goes onto will dictate its overall strength. The next icon option we see is this one, which simply lets you gain five money from the bank. And the final one is that, and this lets you spend money in order to buy one piece of equipment from the market. Out of all of these options, I think I like the idea of this one the most. That will let us gain two new charisma cards. And we do that by placing yellow cubes down onto our board. Now we can only do that if we have options for these, and as you can see on our board, we have 16 different upgrade spots. Some of them have little stars, and many of them have arrows. Now the stars are spots that you can go to at the start of a chain, and you can move from other cubes in order to do upgrades as well. What that means is from this a little mad cube, we can follow the arrow to entirely bonkers, and we can actually put this onto entirely bonkers because it is unlocked by having a little mad placed there. Another thing we could do is simply place this onto Believe because it has that star, which means there is no prerequisite for doing that. Now, I think we do want the Entirely Bonkers card, so we can look through our backpack and find it. And as you can see, it says that for every card you play this turn, you take three coins from the bank. Now, this is going to go directly into our hand, and since we added a yellow cube to our board, that permanently increased our overall charisma by one for the rest of this game. Now we have another card that we can take, and our options are Believe or Curiosity, because that was unlocked by us taking Entirely Bonkers. With that in mind, let's take a look at those two card options. So here is Believe, and that one says you can choose two cards from your discard pile, you shuffle them up and put them on top of your deck, and then you draw one. So that means you can reuse powerful cards from your deck, and you potentially have a 50-50 chance of bringing one of those directly into your hand if it's better for you. Now the other card option for us is Curiosity. It says we can interact at a range equal to our current number of cards in our hand. So if we play this early, we could have a very long-ranging interact option. 
Now we know that we are trying to interact with multiple castles and they are spread across the landscape. So I think curiosity might actually be better than believe. So I think let's upgrade into that one. Now that's going to go into our hand and then we can place this cube here and we can see that by putting that cube onto curiosity we have not only increased our charisma again for the whole game but we have also unlocked the ability to get inverse reality we can take a quick look over here and see that effect says you can discard any number of cards from your hand and for every card discarded you can draw three cards now remember you can never have more than eight cards in your hand unless you have an effect that changes that so this could be a very powerful card that we might want to upgrade into in the future especially considering it is now unlocked for us well, at this point, we have gained both of the cards associated with the desk that we went into, but at this point, we actually gain a bonus. Now, whenever you visit the classroom that matches icons with one of your assignments, you immediately gain one of these upgrade arrows as a bonus for lining that up. Technically, that means if both of our assignments were the same icon and we went to that classroom, we would gain two of those upgrades. Now, in this case, we have a strength-based assignment and a charisma-based assignment, and we did go to the charisma classroom. So that means we immediately gain one of these arrows as a bonus. So we can now gain this transparent upgrade card. Now we can slide this into the sleeve of any card in our hand or any card currently on our stamina row. Now I think we probably want to add it to one of those in our hand. And as you can see, this is double-sided. One side says interact one and the other side says interact two. Obviously two is a bigger number and better than one. However, whenever you upgrade cards, you must upgrade the left side before the right. And since this is the first upgrade we have of the game, we must put it with the left side in. Now what this is going to be is an interact action with a range of one. And this could be a discrete action in addition to whatever else happens on a card. Or if we attach this to the card with an interact action on it already, we could actually add that to the overall range. You could still split them up into two interacts if you want, or just have an even longer ranged interact. So we could add this to curiosity, and then the range is equal to the number of cards in our hand plus one, or we could do this one and then another range one interact when we play this card out. Now that does seem good, but I think we want to add this onto Entirely Bonkers. I really like this card, but by itself, it actually just affects what we do in the future, and it does take one card slot. So I like the idea of having a proactive effect to go along with playing the Entirely Bonkers card, so that we can now do an interact of one in addition to gaining three coins for all future cards played. Now, interact one is quite close, so we have to get close to other things, but we have increased our endurance, and we also have the option of asking asking red for help a couple times in the game to let us move three spaces to try and get us into range to use that before we play even more cards during our turn. Well, at this point, our turn is officially over. And remember, as soon as we finished taking actions and we went to class, technically that is the moment that red could have started playing cards out and performing actions. So let's now see what red wants to do on their turn. Now, the first thing to note over here is the two assignments that Red is trying to work towards on this turn. They have a play two charisma cards assignment, which would get them 10 victory points. And they have another one that gives them 15 victory points if they move seven spaces or more during a turn. The first thing they have to do is put their figure out onto one of the three spawn spots, and they're going to put it right over here. Now they can start playing cards, and the first card will be a stamina card, and in fact they drew two out of their three in their starting hand, and they're going to play this one down, so they have one, two, three, four slots left to play, and they have one, two, three, four cards in their hand, so they have room to play all four of these if they want. Well, the first thing they want to do is actually ask for help. In particular, they're going to ask us for help. This says they can draw up to three cards, remembering they can never have more than eight cards in their hand. So they are going to flip this over, and they will draw three. And then since they asked us for help, we can immediately draw one card from our deck, or we can move up to two times, or we could just take three victory points. Now at the moment, we are pretty far over in the west, and we want to do quite a bit over here before this semester is done, so I think let's take the two movement and move on to this location here. Gaining three points is good, but also getting over here to be able to interact with more castles and potentially fight more Lilliputs could very well be worth more than those three victory points, and I do think moving is the right call for us right now. Well, at this point, they now have a big hand of cards and a bunch of spots to place them, and they have decided to place this trap card. Now, that is associated with the first upgrade they took during setup, and placing traps is specifically something that only Red can do. So let's focus on the card, and it says they can place two trap tokens at a range of one, and they can increase the range by one for every money that they spend. Now, they have decided to spend one money. 
which means they can get rid of a 10 and take a 9 back, and now they have a range of 2 for putting these two trap tokens down. So they can place these from their supply, and if you look at the back of these trap tokens, they say that uh, damage is going to be applied to enemies that land on the space equal to red's current strength. Now they have a range of two, and they've decided to place this one here, and they are going to place this one down onto this location over here. As you can see, each of those placements are two range away from her current position. Now it's important to note that you can only trap empty spots that don't have any enemy minions or opposing figures, and it's also important to note that these traps don't damage other players, and players are allowed to move over them, but players cannot end their movement on top of one of these traps. After that, Red is going to spend two of their money in order to use Red's cloak. As you can see, this is their starting equipment that says once per turn, they may pay two money to then move three spaces on the board. With this in mind, they want to go one, two, three. After that, they want to play Interact. This has a range equal to their Charisma, which is 1, 2, 3, but it looks like they're just interacting with this castle here, so they only needed a range of 1. That's still fine for them. They can put this token over there, and whenever you interact with the castle, you gain 10 victory points, so they go up to 10. At this point, you'll notice they have played two Charisma cards, and that means they have completed this assignment. So that means they will discard this token and then gain 10 more points, which means they are now up to 20. After this, they are going to play an attack card. This will do damage equal to their strength level, and that is going to be 1 plus 0 because they don't have any other strength effects, so that means they are doing 1 damage here. Currently, they are next to 2 Lilliput, and it does take 2 damage in order to defeat them, so they will do 1 damage to this one over here, and it's worth noting that you can stack damage throughout your overall turn, but at the end of your turn, any damage that has been applied goes away. So they need to do 1 more damage to defeat this Lilliput, or 2 more damage to defeat that one over there. With that in mind, they're going to play a second attack card, and this one will deal 2 damage because they now have 2 strength, and they will use that to defeat this little put that had no damage applied to it yet. So, they will gain 5 more points, bringing them up to 25. Well, they are now done taking their actions, so it's time for them to go to class, and technically Robin Hood can now take their actions, but let's go ahead and see what Red does in the classroom. First things first, they must draw 2 assignments and then keep up to 2 of them. The two new ones say draw five cards over the course of a turn and then gain 15 points. And this one says play two cards that each have two upgrades on them, which again are those transparent cards that you slide into the sleeves. At this point, red does not have any upgrades, let alone two cards with two upgrades in them. So they've decided to keep the draw five cards and move seven spaces assignments. Now, as you can see, they have a Wisdom-based assignment and an Endurance-based assignment, so if they go to the Wisdom or Endurance classroom as a bonus, they will gain an upgrade in that specific type, so I think it's likely they will choose one of those classrooms. After considering these options, they are going to go for Endurance. They're going to go onto this spot, which means they can gain one card and two upgrades, but remember, since this matches up with one of their assignments, they will gain a bonus upgrade, so they will add three upgrades total to cards in their hand or on their stamina line, and of course, they do get to gain one Endurance card from their backpack. Now, at the moment, they only have one Endurance card they could take, and that one is Evade, and now they can find that, and this can be added to their hand. This is an Endurance card, as you can see, and when you play it, you can move two spaces for every enemy within two spaces of you. After that, they have three upgrades they can apply, and if they apply one to the left on a card, they could immediately flip one of these over and apply it to the right spot, because remember, you have to do the left before the right, and for each of these upgrades, they can do a discrete move action, or they could add these numbers together to move farther. Now these move upgrades are special because technically whenever you play a card you can do everything on that card in any order of your choosing. So they could potentially double upgrade this attack for example and that would let them move two times then they could attack and then they could move once leaving them very flexible out there on the board. Of course if they upgrade a card in their stamina line it's not currently in their hand so they won't use those upgrades as quickly as they could have before. After considering their options, they do want to double upgrade one card in their hand, and then they will do a single upgrade on their trap card. That way they can move before they place those traps down, which will increase their flexibility. Well, Red is totally done with their turn, and now Robin Hood can go. The first thing they do have to do is place their figurine on the board. Now they've decided to go here, which is coincidentally the same spot everyone else has, but these both are valid spots, and that one seems to be slightly better for them in this moment. 
Now we can focus back over here, and their assignments are defeating four enemies within one turn for 15 points, and playing four different suits to gain 20 victory points. Well, the first thing they want to do is play a stamina card, which they had in their hand, and then after that, they are going to play a move card, so they can move a number of spaces up to their endurance level, which is currently just one. So, they're going to move one space over there, and now they're adjacent to this treasure. And with that in mind, they are going to interact. This says they have a range equal to their charisma, and currently their charisma is just one from the card. So that means they can take five gold from that treasure spot, or they could spend their money in order to gain an equipment from the market. After considering these options, they want to spend three of their coins to buy Dracula's cape. That says for the rest of the game, whenever they defeat an enemy, they will draw one card. Now we can draw a new equipment and place that into the market, and this one is History Books. It costs five coins, and it says if you end your turn within two spaces of a castle, you draw two cards. Now they do have to spend three coins for this, and then after that, they've decided to use Robin's Hat. That says once per turn, they can spend two of their money to then discard a card from their stamina line. In this case, they are going to discard the Interact card, which means they have two more slots available to them and they've decided to play a rest card onto that location there. This lets them draw a number of cards equal to their wisdom, which is currently just one from this card, so they can draw the top card from their deck. And then they are going to play their Marksman card, which is the one they gained from this upgrade on their board. As you can see, the effect says they will do two damage at range four, and they will do this twice. Well, they're going to start by attacking this Lilliput, which is at least range 4 away, and 2 damage will defeat them. And then they are also going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and defeat this Lilliput. And remember, each time they are defeated, they gain 5 points, so that is going to be 10 points for Robin Hood. So, they will go from 3 up to 13, and then they are going to complete one of their assignments. They did indeed play 4 different suits. They have Endurance, Wisdom, Strength, and the Charisma down here. Even though this isn't on the Stamina line, they did play it during this turn, so that will activate this and gain them 20 victory points. So they go from 13 all the way up to 33. In addition to that, they did just defeat 2 Lilliput, so Dracula's Cape will activate, which means they draw 1 card for each defeated enemy, so they are going to draw 2 cards from the top of their deck. And at this point, they are done with their turn. They did not ask anyone for help. It didn't seem like they needed to for the plans they had. And of course, when you don't ask for help, you are not giving those bonuses to your opponents. So they are just fine leaving those both face up for the future. So they can now go to class. And the first thing they do is draw two of these assignments and then choose two total. In this case, they are going to get rid of this one, which says play three endurance cards. And they'll keep this one that says play five cards total throughout one turn. Next up, they have to go to class, or they could skip class and go to the middle. Now, that will cost coins, which they do have, and then they gain a better upgrade. These have better stats, as well as a wider variety of effects on them. In addition to that, there is pre-printed effects on the board. So if they went here, for example, they would pay four coins. They would then take this upgrade and slide it into a card. And this one says you just discard this card. So you could play this one to your stamina row, do everything on it, and then discard it from your row to then play another card into that slot. In addition to that, both of these spots say you can place up to four skill cards into your backpack. And you can take those from anywhere. That could be your discard, your hand, or even your stamina row. And things in your backpack are effectively not in the game. So this is a great way to thin your deck so that you just get the cards that you want to. Down here, these are more expensive. And this one says you can take an equipment card for free without spending coins. Although you do have to spend six to take the spot and this card. And that one also says you can take a free equipment and it is even more expensive. So obviously you would probably take the cheaper one before that, but these were placed randomly out here and perhaps it's worth one extra coin for an effect that you like a little more. Obviously, these are great, but since you skipped class, you won't actually be putting a cube down onto your board. And remember, every cube adds one to the attribute of the matching color. Well, all of that being said, it looks like Robin Hood has decided they want to go to the Wisdom class, and they want to gain two new Wisdom cards from their backpack. When we focus on their board, they have a few options available to them, and the first thing they want to do is watch this. This card says you can draw two cards after playing it, and then you can spend four cards to remove this card from your sequence, and then search your draw pile for a stamina card and place that into your hand. So if you have the money, this can be a very effective card for having big turns. Now this is going to go into their hand, and they now have one more cube to place. That could go onto parry or extraordinary. 
With that in mind, let's take a look at these two cards. Extraordinary simply lets you draw five cards. That's very powerful and pretty simple. And then Parry says if you are attacked in this turn, each enemy's attack damage is reduced by two. Now, I haven't described being attacked just yet, but when you take damage, you lose victory points, so parry is a good way to stop losing victory points. Down below, it also says after you've taken damage, you may spend two money per attacking enemy to deal two damage back to that enemy. Now, the Lilliputs take two damage to be defeated, so that means if they took parry and had the money available and a Lilliput attacked them, then they can actually spend money to defeat those Lilliput and get victory points for them. Now, between these two options, they have decided to go for parry, and and that means they can put the blue cube right over there. Now we can focus out and see that they went to a classroom that matches up with one of their assignments, which means they will gain a bonus upgrade associated with that classroom. For Wisdom, this upgrade gains you coins. The left option gains you two coins, and the right option gains you four. So they can add this one to any card on their stamina row or their hand, and since this is their first upgrade, it must go on the left side. After thinking it through, they are going to add it to this card. And at this point, Robin is fully done with their turn, and since every player has taken one turn, the first round of the game is coming to a close. Now, the first thing that we do in the end of round phase is we have to check to see who is the current professor's favorite. That is going to be the player who has the least number of victory points, and we have 15 compared to the 25 of Red and the 33 of Robin Hood, so that means we are still going to be the professor's favorite, so we can leave this in front of ourselves for the next round. Now we can actually flip this over and it tells us everything that we do during this end of round step. We have to go from the top to the bottom, so that means we now have to perform the enemy turn. The way this works is we have to flip a random card from the top of each deck that is associated with an enemy out here on the board. In this scenario, we have Lilliputs, Castles, and Ships, but the ships only show up when we make it to the second semester. So for now, we just have Castles and Lilliputs, so we will draw the top card from each of these decks. Now these cards dictate what the enemies are going to do, and the player who is currently the professor's favorite gets to make all of the decisions associated with this. Now that is us, and we can start with the Lilliputs. This says that they are all going to move up to one space, and they will all attack at a range of one. Now I did say all, so that means because we are the professor's favorite, we can move every single Lilliput currently out here on the board up to once because that is the amount dictated on the card we drew, and then every single Lilliput will automatically attack a legend if there is one in range, and again that card says that is a range of one. Now the Lilliputs do two damage, so that means if there was a Lilliput next to a legend, then they would do that two damage to the legend, and then that legend would lose victory points equal to the damage. So obviously you don't want to take damage considering having the most victory points is how you win the game. Now, if we have a situation where a Lilliput could target two different legends, then it will automatically target the legend with the least victory points. But fortunately, the player with the least victory points total can make these decisions and have control about where the Lilliputs are. Now, one thing we know is the fact that these traps will do damage equal to Red's current strength, and that is two, and each Lilliput will be defeated when they take two damage. So that means we obviously don't want to move these Lilliputs onto the traps, and that also means that Red might want to try and engineer things so that they have the least number of victory points when they have a bunch of traps out, to then move the Lilliputs onto those traps and force them to take that damage and be defeated so that Red can gain victory points for them. Now, in this situation, we've defeated all of the Lilliputs over here in the west, and I would love to move some so that they would be in range of our opponents to then have them attack our opponents and have them lose victory points, but unfortunately, we don't have any options for that. So in this case, we could move Lilliput away from us, I suppose. The one thing we have to consider is the cards we currently have in hand, and we are going to draw more. Now, this A Little Mad card is an option to deal damage at a decent amount of strength based off of our range, so it would be good to have at least one Lilliput available to be targeted with that, but maybe we should move the rest of them farther away from our opponents to make it harder for them to catch up to them, especially uh, Robin Hood, considering they have this assignment that says they need to defeat four enemies. So with that in mind, let's move these two Lilliput one away so that it's harder for Robin Hood to catch up. And then maybe we can move these two farther away as well. Actually, by placing over here, we've potentially blocked that spot, although players are allowed to walk on these treasure locations. Now, we could move the rest of the Lilliput if we wanted to, but I don't see a strong reason to. And at this point, I think we are good with the movement. Now, every Lilliput will deal two damage to one legend that is within one range of them, 
but again, currently there are no legends within range, so that is not going to happen here. After that, every castle is going to attack with a range of 2, and they do 6 damage if they are able to successfully hit a legend. When we focus over here, this castle is closest to all of us, and remember, if you interact with the castle, then it will not attack you. That means red is fine, even though they are within 2 range, and it looks like Robin Hood is 1, 2, 3, 4 range away, so they are too far out of range for this castle to deal that 6 damage, which is unfortunate for us anyway. So, the enemy turn is done, and now it's time to spawn new enemies. This happens in player order, starting with the player with the professor's favor token, so that's us. And when we look at these cards, this one right here says each player spawns up to two Lilliputs onto the board. These must go down adjacent to a spawn icon on the board, and I guess we moved some of those away, but it freed up some of these spots for our opponents to put these down into. Uh, now, preferably, I'd like these to be as far away from Robin Hood as possible, and if we don't place these, then uh, Red could place two, and then Robin Hood could also play two. So I think we'll just put these two up here so they are not close to Robin Hood. And then red can place two more as well. And they don't have a ton of options here. They could go onto these two spots here or those two spots over there. And they like this considering that puts more Lilliputs next to their traps where they could potentially be moved over there in the future. Now at this point, Robin Hood could place Lilliputs of their own, except all of them are now out on the map. So there aren't any more to place. So Robin Hood can't spawn any. After that, it's now time for the discard sequence step. The way this works is we are all going to simultaneously take every card in our sequence, as well as all stamina cards except for our base one, and we'll put all of these into our discard piles. After that, each player can simultaneously discard as many cards as they want from their hand, and finally they will draw cards from their deck until they have six cards in their hand. Now at the moment we can look over here and see that we have three cards in our deck and every time we go to draw a card from our deck and there are no more cards here, we will shuffle our discard pile to make a new draw deck. Now with that in mind, it is good to try and to cycle through our deck because we know there is some good stuff in here, in particular two out of our three extra stamina cards. So if we look at our hand, I think we certainly want to keep entirely bonkers because we have upgraded it and then this a little mad is quite powerful so we should keep that as well. Curiosity is another powerful card that we just got, so let's keep that. But then this rest card is not doing a lot for us, so I think we can discard this. Now, at this point, we have three cards in our hand, so we are going to draw until we have six, which means we now have no deck, but we had exactly the right number of cards, so we are not going to reshuffle. Now, we do have the ability to use our equipment to draw three cards for two money in the future, so we could do that in order to cycle these back in and potentially find more of those stamina cards. Well, speaking of equipment, now is actually the time for us to refresh all of the equipment that we have in front of us, and if both of our Ask for Help tiles had been used, then now would be the time we'd flip them over. Obviously, we've only used one of those at this moment, though, so we don't flip over either of these. The final thing we have to do is move the time token forward once to show that we finished the 8 o'clock period and now we can start the 10 o'clock period where every player will once again take one turn in order starting with the professor's favorite and then once we've all done that we can move on to the next period. Once we've gone through four of these that will finish the semester and at this point let's now start the 10 o'clock period. Well we get to start things out and we can begin by looking at our hand of cards. We do have a stamina, so let's play that first thing. And we also need to keep in mind that it would be great to play two strength cards to get these 10 points. And if we somehow can spend 12 coins, that will get us 15 points. We only have four coins at the moment, though, so we'd have to gain eight more coins and then spend all of these in order to make that happen. Realistically, I think we should try to set up to complete spend 12 coins in the future, and with that in mind, let's just start with Entirely Bonkers. This says every other card we play is going to gain us 3 coins, and we also get an Interact 1, but unfortunately I just don't see a way to actually use that Interact 1, so I think that is also something that's going to help us out in the future. When I focus out here, you'll notice the things that we can interact with are these treasure spots as well as the castles, and we want to head over here, and I just don't see a way to leverage the situation to be able to play this and actually use that interact one in this moment. The next thing we should do is ask Red for help. This lets us move up to three spaces. And remember, we want to play two strength cards in this round to complete that assignment, so we need to get close to some Lilliput, and with that in mind, let's go one, two, three. After that, Red can now immediately draw one card, move twice, or gain three victory points. And after considering all of those options, they are going to move twice. Next up, let's play Attack. 
This will deal damage to an adjacent hex that is equal to our strength level, and our strength is now 1 plus 1 or 2. So we can use that to defeat any of these three Lilliput that are directly around us, and I think we'll defeat this one here, and that is going to gain us 5 victory points, bringing us to 20. After that, let's play a little mad. This says it will deal 5 damage, and then the range is going to be equal to our current strength level. Well, our strength is now 1 plus 1 plus 1, or 3, although we do still have two Lilliput directly next to us that could potentially attack us later on in this round, uh, especially if we have more victory points than one of our opponents. So I think let's just get rid of one of these, and let's go for this one here. So that is going to gain us five more points which means we are now up to 25. At this moment, we can also complete this assignment because we did play two strength cards, so that will get us 10 more points, which will bring us up to 35. That's finished this attack, although I just realized with each of these card plays, we gained three coins from Entirely Bonkers, so we should have six more coins. That means we now have 10 coins total, which again is not quite enough to spend at 12, but we are getting up there to try and do this in the future. Well, at this point, it looks like our turn is actually over. Perhaps we should have spent two coins to use the White Rabbit to make a new draw deck and draw three in an attempt to find a stamina card to keep playing more, but this is not the plan we ended up going with, and perhaps hoarding some coins to complete this assignment sooner rather than later is a good idea anyway. Either way, we can now go to class, and we can start by taking two new assignments. This one says play two wisdom cards to get 10 points, and that one says interact with a treasure space two times in order to get 15 victory points. Honestly, I think let's keep the two new ones. I know we've been building towards the spend 12 coins, but I think we have enough interact options that interacting with a single treasure space twice is a more likely thing to happen, and this way we can get the specific treasures that are better for us instead of just spending a bunch of money to try and complete the assignment. So I think this is the one to go away, and these are the ones we can work towards in the future. Now that we are not carrying so much about hoarding our money, I think let's actually skip class and go to this spot over here. That is going to cost six of our gold, and then we can take a piece of equipment for free, and we will gain this upgrade, which has an attack three on the left or an attack five on the right. Let's start by spending the six coins, and now we can take any of this equipment for free, and considering we are quite close to Lilliput and we cannot guarantee that we will be controlling them, I think let's take Don Quixote's helmet. That reduces the damage that each enemy will do to us by one for as long as we have it. Next up, we have to draw a new equipment from the stack, and this one is Robin Hood's arrows. It says it increases your strength level by one, and it costs five coins to take. Now we can add this special upgrade to any card in our stamina row or any card in our hand. Now attack 3 is good and attack 5 does seem better, but remember we can only do the attack 5 if we are upgrading a card that already has a left side. I'm not really sure if we want to add this to entirely bonkers. I'd rather have this on an attack card already or a move card so that you could move and then do that attack. Now with that in mind, I think we actually want to add this to a little mat. This one does 5 damage right now, and when we add this in here, that means when we play this, we can do a 5 damage attack and a separate 3 damage attack, or we can add these together, and they will all have a range equal to our strength level. This is particularly important because if we look to the future, there will be ships in the second semester, and those ships will have 8 health. So that means a little mad could do 5 plus 3 or 8 damage, and we could use this in the second semester to defeat these ships. Now we don't know the specifics of the ships, but we do know that defeating them is on the horizon, and at the beginning of the semester it did even tell us to maybe focus on doing some more damage in order to prepare for the second semester of the game. We can also see that castles take 10 damage to be defeated, although we don't have defeating castles as a task, so that is not something we can do in the first semester, but it seems likely we'll be able to defeat them in the second semester of the game. Now we did upgrade a card on our stamina row, so it will stay out there, and unfortunately we won't gain access to this until it makes it into our discard pile, back into our deck, and back into our hand, but our deck isn't that big, and I think that'll probably happen soon. Either way, we are now done going to class, so now it's time for red to go. Well, the first thing they are going to do is play a stamina card they had in their hand, and then they're going to play this rest card. This has a move one and a move two on it, so that means they can move up to three times, and they will draw a number of cards equal to their wisdom level, which is currently just one. So they will draw one card, but they don't have a deck, so they have to first shuffle up their discard pile. 
and then they can draw the top card from that deck. And then they can move up to three times. They are going to go one, two, three, and then they're going to play Evade. This says they can move two spaces for every enemy within two spaces of you, and there are currently one, two, three enemies within two spaces, so that means red can move up to six more spaces. They've decided to go the full six, so they will go one, two, three, four, five, six. Remember, you can't enter locations with these enemy tokens in them. After that, they can complete this assignment that says they have to move seven spaces, and they move three more times before that, so they have definitely completed this assignment. That is going to gain them 15 points, which will bring them from 25 up to 40. Next up, it looks like they drew a stamina card, and they're going to play that. And after that, they're going to move yet again. This is simply going to be a movement equal to their endurance level, which is currently 1, 2, 3. Now again, they don't have to move the full amount, but in this case, they have decided to. They're going to go 1, 2, 3, just like that. They have one spot left on their stamina row, and they're going to play Interact. This lets them interact with something up to a range equal to their charisma, which is currently 2. And this castle is indeed 2 away. So they can interact, which means they will put their token down, and then that is going to gain them 10 points, and this castle will not attack them at the end of the round. They were at 40, so those 10 points will bring them up to 50. At this point, Red is done with their turn. They did not ask for any help, and the only option they had was asking Robin for help, but it appears they didn't think that benefit was going to be worth the benefit Robin would have given by asking for help. They also didn't use this equipment, but that does cost too money, so it only makes sense to use this kind of thing when you really need to. So, Red can go to class, and as you can see, we have to shuffle up the discarded assignments for them to draw two more. The two they drew are play four different suits and use three equipment actions. These are both 20-point assignments, and you'll note both of them also don't have an associated suit. So if they kept both of these, then there would be no way for them to get a bonus for going to a specific matching classroom. With that in mind, they do want to keep this draw five cards, and they only have one equipment they could use right now, so they think using three equipment actions in one turn is unlikely to happen for a while, so they'll keep these two here. Next up, they may go to a classroom, and they've decided to go to the Wisdom Classroom. They're going to go onto this desk, which lets them gain one Wisdom card, and they can spend coins in order to buy one item from the market. After considering these options, they are going to spend five coins to buy Robin Hood's arrows, and that means they now have a permanent plus one to their overall strength. We can draw a new item to replace that, and this is Excalibur. That costs 9 coins, and it has an effect that says, Action, deal 8 damage to an adjacent enemy. So you just flip this over to deal 8 damage, and that is a very powerful piece of equipment. So they can gain a Wisdom card, and they're going to go with Basket. As you can see, this has an effect that says they can move 3 enemies a number of spaces equal to their Endurance level. Obviously, this goes in tandem very well with their traps. This means they could move enemies around as an action to move them into the traps that they have laid in order to have them be defeated. They don't necessarily have to worry about having the least amount of victory points to then move all of the enemies at the end of a round. So this is going to go into their hand. And since they visited the Wisdom Classroom and that matches up with this assignment, they do gain a Wisdom Upgrade. Once again, this lets them gain 2 or 4 gold, depending on if this is the first or second upgrade that goes onto a card. After considering their options, they are going to upgrade a card in their hand. Well, Red is completely done with their turn, and now Robin Hood can take actions. And they're going to start by playing 2 stamina cards that they have in their hand. The next thing they want to do is ask us for help, and that will let them draw up to 3 cards from their deck. They have one card here, so they can draw that, and then they can make a new draw deck with this, and then they can draw two more. After that, we can draw one card, move up to two times on the map, or gain three victory points. And honestly, I think let's just take the points. That will bring us from 35 up to 38. After that, Robin is going to play Watch This. That lets them draw two cards from the top of their deck, and then they could spend four of their coins in order to remove this card from their row, and then they can search their draw deck for a stamina card to then put that into their hand. Now this is going to gain them two coins, so they will gain that, and then spend that along with two other coins in order to perform this action. So they have three coins left, and now they can find a stamina card in their draw deck, and then that will go into their hand, and obviously they will immediately play that one down onto their line, so they still have one, two, three, four, five card plays that they can do. 
Now they've decided to play and interact, and their charisma level is currently 1, so they have to interact with an adjacent spot. And that will be this treasure, and instead of buying equipment, they are just going to take 5 coins from the supply. After that, they are going to move, and their endurance is just 1, so they can move up to once. And they will go onto this spot here. After that, they are going to play Split Shot. That lets them deal 4 damage at range 2, and they can do this twice. And currently, this Lilliput is within 4 range, as is that one, and this one over here. Now, they have decided they will defeat both of these, so they will gain 5 points each, which is 10 points total. So, they go from 33 up to 43. And of course, Dracula's Cape lets them draw a card every time they defeat an enemy, so they're going to draw two more cards, and that is their whole deck. They only have one card in their discard pile. Currently, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards in their hand, though, so they are just fine because they can have at most eight. Now they are going to move, and their endurance is two, and they will move backwards, actually, onto this spot here. At this moment, they have played five cards, so they can complete this assignment, and that will get them 15 points which will bring them up to 58. Now they're going to play an Interact card, and their Charisma is 2, and this castle is range 2 away. So that means they can place their token here, and since they interacted with it, that is going to gain them 10 points, bringing them from 58 up to 68. Now at this point, they have only interacted with one castle, and they have effectively finished their second out of four turns for this round, so they have quite a bit of work to do to interact with two more of these before the round is over. Well, at this point, they could use Robin's Hat by spending two coins to discard one of these and play another card, but despite having five cards in their hand, they don't think any of those are actually going to help them. They are regretting a little bit asking us for help instead of Alice for those extra moves, but these are the decisions they made, so they're going to have to stick with it. Now, at this point, they are going to go to class, and they can start by drawing two assignments. This one will be completed if they play two Endurance cards, and that one will be completed if they play two cards that have two upgrades each on them. Well, they've decided this is still pretty far away, so they'll get rid of this and keep these two over here. And now they're going to go to class, and they've decided to go to the Endurance spot. In particular, they'll go here, which lets them gain two new cards. The first card they're going to take is Sneak. This says that you can move equal to your Wisdom level times 2, and then if you are attacked this turn, you reduce each attack's damage by 2, and their base Wisdom is 2, so that means the base move on this card is 4, and that will go up if they play Wisdom cards, and they do have some good ones in their deck. Now they could put this one onto Sidestep, and that is what they're going to do. And this simply says, move up to six spaces. Now, they are focusing on this movement because right now they are way in the west and there's a bunch of ground they need to cover before the end of this semester to interact with those other castles. And the big thing they have to do is move. And up to this point, that has been a weakness of theirs. Now, they did go to the Endurance Classroom and that matches up with one of their assignments. So they can gain an Endurance upgrade. And they can add this into any card on their Stamina Row or any card in their Gigantic Hand. After considering these options, they want to add a move one onto split shot. This is a very effective way to take out those little put, and they like the idea of being able to move before they actually perform that attack. All right, Robin Hood is completely done with their turn. And since everyone has taken a turn, the round is coming to an end. Now, the player with the least victory points will be the professor's favorite, and it looks like that is still us with 38, so we can keep this. And now it's time for the enemy turns. The first card to flip is the castle. That says it's going to attack once at range 2, and then attack again at range 2. And remember, each of those attacks would do 6 damage. Over here, the Lilliput are also going to do something, and they're just going to move. They don't actually have an attack this round. Well, each of them can move up to 3 spaces. And honestly, I'd like to move some of these around so that we can easily make it to this castle. So let's move this one down, and this one over there. And then we know that Red is probably trying to make it to either of these castles, so maybe let's try to fill in these gaps to make it harder for them to get over there. So let's move this one, one, two, three spaces. That one can go one, two. This one up here can go one, two, three. And that one can go one, two, three. And after that, let's keep surrounding Red, and I think we'll go one, two, one, two, and then one, two. So we have kind of trapped Red in in this corner of the map, although Red can, of course, play some attack cards to make their way through this, and they will get points for that. 
and now every castle will attack each legend that has not interacted with it, and in this round they will attack twice at range 2. It looks like this one won't attack anyone because everyone has interacted, this one won't attack red because they have interacted, and there are no legends within range 2 of these two castles, which is probably a good thing, considering that double attack would have done 6 damage each, which would have cost up to 12 points to the legends that were hit. Now it's time to spawn enemies, and the card that we drew for the Lilliput says the losing player spawns 7. Well, that's us, so we can spawn up to 7, and there's only 4 in the supply, so we can place all 4 of these down. Honestly, I think we should just put more of them over here, so there is just an army of these Lilliputs surrounding red. Uh, we have this one, and we can put it over there if we want. Uh, we could also put it over here so that we have more options for us to try and take them out, but there's quite a few over here already. Yeah, let's just put this one right down over there. Next up, we can all discard our sequences. And then we can also discard cards from our hand. We have a rest and a curiosity, and the curiosity could be great, but the rest I'm not so sure about. So I think let's discard this one and then draw back up to six. So we draw five cards, and we don't have a deck, so let's shuffle this up and then draw five cards. Our opponents will also do this. And now we can move on to the next round. Oops, I just realized we did ask for help from both of our opponents, so we can flip these over. And now, I think what I'm going to do is fast forward through the next two rounds, so that the next thing that we see is what happens when we go from the first semester to the second. Well, we've just finished the fourth round of the game, and that means the first semester is coming to a close. Now, the first thing that we have to do is a reset. Over here, all of the specialty upgrades that were not taken will be discarded, and then new ones will be drawn from the deck, and then all of these tokens that are over here can be removed. Next up, we'll take all of the equipment currently in the market and put it to the bottom of the deck, and then we are going to deal four more out. Let's take a quick look at these. Hermes Boots will increase your endurance level by one for five coins. Alice's Bottle Drink Me will increase your endurance level by four for nine coins. Robin Hood's Arrows will increase your wisdom by one level for five. And Bags of Gold will cost four. And whenever you interact with or defeat a castle, you gain two money. The next thing that we have to do is check the objective. Now this says if players did not interact with at least three out of the four castles, then they will lose 30 victory points. Fortunately, it looks like all of us were able to do that. We interacted with these three. Uh, Robin was able to do that as well. And Red interacted with these three over here. Uh, both Robin and ourselves interacted with two of these castles in that final round of the semester, so it was pretty close. Either way, it looks like no players are going to lose 30 points. And right now, the Robin Hood player has a lot more points than the rest of us. They are certainly doing well in this game. Now what we have to do is clear off this board including clearing off our score tokens, although we can each remember the score we currently have. It looks like Robin has 163, uh, Red has 110, and we have 106. Now what we can do is flip the page to the next semester, and then put our score tokens back onto the same locations on this track. Next up, we have to populate this map. We have five castles. And then we are going to put a Lilliput token onto every non-treasure land space on the islands out at sea. Next up, we can place these ships down onto the ship spawn spots. And now it's time for us to flip this card over and read through the descriptive text for the second semester of Gulliver's Travels. This says, Students, the Lilliputs have seen your power and now view you not as terrifying giants, but as their secret weapons. You see, the Lilliputs have been in an endless war with their rivals to the east. The king of Lilliput has, what he thinks, a brilliant idea to use you to his advantage. He calls out to you and you lay your hand to the ground. He climbs onto it like a platform and you raise your hand up to eye level. The king proclaims, Great and glorious giants, we need not fight any longer. We are your friends and we need your help. Our enemies to the east have been fighting us for too long, and their navy has gotten too strong for us to hold off. We need you to go into the water, grab their ships, and bring them back here for us to use. The Easterners are ruthless, so you must be careful. You look off to the eastern shore of Lilliput Island, and you see a grouping of shadowed islands with small, four-foot-tall ships sailing around the waters. You walk into the ocean, and to you, the water is barely waist-high at its deepest. 
you begin your walking across the shallow sea to grab those ships. We can now open our textbook to page two, as we've already done, and we can begin. Now what we have to do is look at the objectives and tasks available for this scenario. And in this case, we all must drop three ships onto land before the end of the semester. And if we don't do this, then we are going to lose 30 points. Over here in the task area, we can interact with castles in a similar way to what we've done in the first semester. We can also defeat the castles. We can also defeat Lilliput and defeat the ships. And finally, we can drop ships off on land. Now, in order to drop the ships off, we have to have them and go onto one of the drop off locations that are right over here. Well, let's now start the first round of the second semester, and we are the professor's favorite still because we have the least number of points, so we get to go first. Now, at the start of each semester, our figures are not on the board, so we have to begin by placing them onto one of the spawn locations, and these are the three options available for us, and I think we will go onto this spot here. So we can now take our turn, and the first thing that we should do is certainly play this stamina card out. Now the goal for this semester is to pick up those ships and to drop them off. And in order to pick them up, we have to defeat them, and those ships have 8 health. That means we have to do 8 damage to them in order to pull them off the board, place them onto our area, and then we can carry them back to shore. Now we've obviously been gaining new cards and upgrading the cards that we have. Our Entirely Bonkers now also makes us 4 coins, and we picked up this Eat the Cake card. As you can see, this actually attacks every single adjacent spot to where we are, but it only does two damage, and in this case we upgraded it once, so it does three damage. Now it also says your strength level is at plus two, and your endurance is minus four, while this card is currently out there on the stamina row, so this could certainly help with future attacks if those attacks are based on your overall strength level. We do have a little mad, and this can do five plus three or eight damage, and the range is equal to our strength. Currently, we have a base strength of 2, and if we played Eat the Cake first, that would increase that to 4, which means we would have a range of 4 on a little mad to do 8 damage, which would be enough to defeat one of those ships. Now, we also know that it would be great to play 2 Endurance cards, as well as 2 Wisdom cards. Either or would be good, and of course, doing both of them would be great, although we've only found one Stamina card so far, so I'm not sure if we're going to be able to pull both of these off. You know what? I think the first thing that we should do is spend two of our money to do the white rabbit effect to draw three cards, and that will increase the options that we have as we plan out our turn. So we spent those two, and then we can draw three off the top. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we found two stamina right off the bat. I did shuffle this, but maybe not well enough. Uh, either way, it looks like that is good fortune for us. We can put all of these out, and we now have one, two, three, four, five card slots to fill. Considering we're going to play a bunch of cards, I think we should start with Entirely Bonkers, because that says every future card that we play will gain us three coins. This also lets us immediately take four coins, and we can do an interact of one. Now at this point, I'm going to mildly cheat. We did have Entirely Bonkers in our hand, so we certainly should have started here instead of there, so that we could do an interact one on this treasure spot. I just wasn't paying enough attention to my hand. Sorry for the cheating. So let's take four gold from this upgrade on Entirely Bonkers. And then when we do an interact one, we can then interact with this treasure spot, which we definitely started right next to, and I certainly did not cheat to move over. At the moment, we have eight money available to us, which is a little unfortunate. If we had one more, we could have increased our endurance by four for as long as we had it, and that certainly would have been nice. That being said, increasing our endurance once is still great, so I think let's spend five coins in order to take Hermes Boots. Now, as you can see, we already have four equipment, and we can only have four at max, and we do have this great Excalibur that we picked up near the end of the first semester. I do think we want to keep this because that deals eight damage to an adjacent enemy, and we can use that to defeat a boat. Now, I don't think Don Quixote's Helm is something we should keep anymore. That reduces the damage coming in, but I think I'd rather just have the plus one to our endurance. Well, at this point, we want to move out, but we don't actually have any movement actions in our hand. Fortunately, we can ask Red for help. That will gain us three movement, and we can use that to go one, two, three. So Red can draw a card, move twice, or gain three points. And they've decided to take the three points, bringing them up to 113. Well, we are now adjacent to a ship, and we have Excalibur, so let's use this. Once again, that says for an action, we deal eight damage to an adjacent enemy. And these ships have 8 health, so Excalibur can defeat this ship, and when we look over here, each defeated ship will gain us 8 victory points. So we'll go from 106 up to 114. After that, we now have this ship in our hand, and we need to drop it off on shore. 
Now we can only hold three ships at any one time, and I will just put this over into our area. Once we drop them off onto shore, we can put them onto our mat so that we can easily tell if we got three of them by the end of the semester in order to not suffer that penalty. Well, we have a bunch of card slots to fill in, and I think the next thing that we should do is the A Little Mad card. That says we will do 5 damage, and we also have an attack 3 on there, so that could be an attack of 5 and an attack of 3, or 1 attack of 8. I think we're going to go with 8, and our range is going to be equal to our strength, and currently our strength is 1, 2, 3. Now before we do anything else, Entirely Bonkers is going to get us 3 coins for every subsequent card we play, so we can gain 3 coins which means we're up to six. And then with a range of three, we can easily hit this ship and defeat it considering it has eight health and a little mad does eight damage now that we've upgraded it. So we can take eight more points and that will bring us up to 122. And this is now the second ship that we're holding in our hand. At this point, we have three more slots that we can fill in and we have some good cards in our hand, but I think we realistically need to move. So let's play this rest card to draw cards and hope to find a movement. Now our wisdom is currently two, so we will draw two cards from the top of our deck and we found a rest and an interact. Now that's a little unfortunate, although playing an interact is not necessarily a bad thing. They have a range equal to our charisma, and if we play this out, we would have one, two, three, four charisma, and this castle is one, two, three, four away. So this is certainly a good option for us, and actually before I do anything else, rest is going to get us three more coins due to entirely bonkers. That brings us up to nine, and having gold around is a good thing. Once the game is over, every two gold is worth a victory point. You know what? I think we'll go for it. We will play interact which means we can interact with this castle. And then in this scenario, that is going to gain us 10 points. If we defeated the castle, we would get 15 points, but getting up to 10 health to defeat those castles is certainly no easy feat. So we're going to gain 10, which will bring us from 122 up to 132. All right, at this point, we have one spot left on our stamina row, and honestly, none of these cards' effects do that much for us. And it is worth noting that if we end our turn with any empty spots on our stamina row, then we will gain three points for each of those empty spots. So we could simply not play one of these cards to gain three points, but I think in this case, considering we have a play two wisdom cards assignment, we should probably play one more wisdom card. That is going to be the rest, and that lets us draw a number of cards equal to our wisdom, which is one, two, three. So we can draw three cards from the top of our deck, and now we can add these into our hand. We can't actually play any of them because we don't have spots for them, but we could potentially hold on to them for the next turn. Now we did just complete this, and unfortunately we didn't play any endurance cards because we did not draw into any of them, so we did not complete the other one. Either way, this is going to get us 10 victory points which will bring us from 132 up to 142. And I just realized that there should be another equipment out here on the market. That one is sheep and pigs. It costs six coins and it increases your strength by two. Well, I think we are done taking actions. So now we can take assignments. We need two and there's only one in the draw pile. So let's shuffle the discard and then draw one more. And now we can place these down here. Uh, this one says spend 12 coins to gain 15 points. And that one is worth 15 points if we move seven spaces. Now we actually have 12 coins, but we also have a full set of equipment. And I'm not sure it makes sense to spend the coins considering every two coins is worth one point at the end of the game. If we had equipment spots to fill in or if it was earlier, I think that would be a good thing to go after, but not in this moment. Also, these synergize pretty well because endurance cards often move you. So it's possible we could play two or more endurance cards to move seven spaces and complete both of these, which would get us 25 points total. All right, now let's go to class, and if we go to the Endurance classroom, we will gain an extra Endurance upgrade, which will increase our movement, which might make it easier to complete this right here. Now, that being said, I think there's actually a better option out here, and if I'd known this, I might have played our turn a little bit differently, but that's fine. This spot right over here would get us an upgrade that has an Attack 6 on it. This also would let us take an Equipment card for free, and obviously it costs 6 money, and I think we are going to do this. The reason for that is because we can take an equipment for free and we can take Alice's bottle that says drink me and that increases our endurance by four. Clearly this is better than Hermes boots and clearly we should not have spent the five coins to take this earlier on in the turn, but that's fine. You have to plan these things ahead and obviously I did not plan this one very well. 
Either way, this can go away, and now we have a base endurance of six from these two pieces of equipment. So when we get those move cards, we can certainly do well with them. Now we do need to see a new equipment into the market, and this is Glasses of Wine. It costs five coins, and it says when you are adjacent to a castle, your charisma is plus five. Next up, we can apply this upgrade to any card in our stamina row or any card in our hand, and this is the main reason we decided to go to that spot. Eat the Cake damages all adjacent spots for two, and with this attack one, they do three. However, this being the second upgrade, this will add eight to that attack. So we can slide this in here, and now when we play Eat the Cake, this will do 2 plus 1 plus 8, or 11 damage to every spot adjacent to Alice. This means we could use this to defeat castles as well as ships, so if we were able to position ourselves well, we could defeat a ton of enemies and get a crazy amount of points for this one card play. So let's put this incredibly powerful card back into our hand, and I have no doubt that in the future we can find a great opportunity to use that to our advantage. All right, it's now time for Red to go, and the first thing they have to do is place their figure onto the board. They decided to place right here, and then the first thing they are going to do is place a stamina card. Next up, they are going to interact with that treasure spot and spend six of their money in order to buy sheep and pigs. That is going to increase their overall strength by two, and the next equipment to come out on the market is going to be Tom Sawyer's paintbrush, which increases your charisma level by one, and it costs five. So they can place this here, and their strength is now 2 plus 1 plus 2, or 5. That's important because remember, every trap, when activated, will deal damage equal to their strength. And of course, if they want to defeat ships with traps, they will have to do 8 damage, so they are 3 away. Now they can increase that damage by playing strength cards from their hand, and it's also possible they'll try to increase their strength by putting more of the red cubes down onto their board. The next thing they want to do is play a rest card. That will let them draw a number of cards equal to their wisdom, which is currently 1, 2, 3, and this has a move 1 and a move 2 upgrade on it. So they can draw 3 cards from the top of their deck, and then they can move 3 times, and they've decided to go 1, 2, 3. After that, they have a stamina in their hand, so they're going to play that. And then they'll play their trap card. This has a move 1 on it, and they can take four money, and then they can put two trap tokens at a range of one, and they can spend money to increase that range if they want to. So they can start by taking the four money, and then they're going to place the traps right here. After that, they're going to play an evade, and that lets them move two spaces for every enemy within two spaces of them. And currently there are two, so they can move up to four times. After considering their options, they are going to go one, two, three, four spaces. And then they're going to ask Robin for help. That lets them remove one of these cards from their row, and then Robin can take a benefit. And in this case, they've decided to just take three points. With one spot left, Red wants to play Basket. Now this says they can move three enemies a number of spaces equal to their endurance level, and that is one, two. Now this also lets them gain two coins, and it lets them perform an attack of two. So they can take the coins and then they can attack, but unfortunately for them, they don't have any legal targets, so that is not going to do anything for them. Now, the big thing for them is they can move up to three of the enemies up to two times because they have two endurance, and they are going to start with this one and move it onto this trap. Now, the trap is going to deal damage to the enemy equal to Red's current strength, and that is one, two, three, four, five. So that's going to be a five damage trap, and again, it takes eight damage to defeat those ships. So five damage has been done here, and they're going to move the ship again because they can move it up to two times. That will run it into this trap, and that will deal five more damage. That means that this ship has been defeated, and Red is going to gain eight victory points. Now Red can move up to two other enemies up to two times, and they've decided to move this boat twice, and this one will also go two times. Actually, in this case, they're just going to move it once. Well, at this point, Red has played five cards, so they can complete this assignment and gain 15 victory points. And that will bring them from 121 up to 136. After that, they are done taking actions, so they can go to class and start by gaining two new assignments. These are both charisma related. One says play two charisma cards, and the other one says interact with the treasure space two times. They think they want to keep these two here, so they will discard this one. And then they want to go to strength school. They are going to go right here, which lets them gain one strength card, and then they will do two strength upgrades. And since they have a strength assignment, that will get them a bonus upgrade. So they will get three upgrades total. 
Now they do get to take one red card, and the only option for them right now is Sneak Attack. So they can place this here, and that's increased their strength by one, and now they will gain Sneak Attack. That says that the damage for this attack is equal to the number of spaces that Red has moved on that particular turn. Now Red can perform some upgrades, and they're going to put two onto one card in their hand, which is probably Sneak Attack. And then they're going to upgrade Evade up here as well. Well, red is completely done, so now Robin can go, and the first thing they have to do is place their figure on the board. They've decided to start here. Robin Hood can start playing cards, and they're going to put two stamina cards out, and then they will play Watch This. That lets them draw two cards, so they have to make a new draw pile. And then that says they can spend four money to remove this card, and then search for a stamina card in their draw pile. Now this also gives them two money, so they can effectively do this by spending two money, which they just barely have, and that is what they have decided to do. So they can search through here for their third stamina card, and then they'll put that into play. Next up, they are going to play Sneak. That lets them move a number of spaces equal to twice their Wisdom level, which is currently just two because they did discard Watch This. So that means they can move up to four times, and if they are attacked, every attack will deal two less damage. So they can move four times, and they're going to go one, two, three, and then they're going to play Split Shot. This lets them do two damage at a range of four, and they can do this twice. This also gives them a move of one, and they can discard two cards from the row when they play this out. Now they've decided to start by doing two damage at range four twice, and as you can see, that will be enough for them to defeat both of these Lilliput tokens. Each of these will get them five points, so they will go from 166 up to 176. After that, they can discard up to two cards, so they will discard both of these, and strangely enough, they have two cards left in their hand, and they don't have anything else to do. It looks like they didn't draw into some of their card draw actions, so they have way more options available to them than they actually have good cards to play. Now that's fine, you get three points for every empty spot on your stamina row. It's a little strange to end with an empty row here, but remember, they did discard three of their played cards through the upgrades and various cards they had in their hand. So they are going to gain one, two, three, four, five times three, or 15 points for ending their turn with so many open spots. This means they will go from 176 up to 191. Next up, they can gain two assignments and then choose two out of these four to keep. They've decided to keep these two here. Next up, they are going to go to Charisma class, and that is going to gain them two cards. The first of these will be Steal from the Rich. Now, if they look through here, you can see the effect says you gain two gold for each enemy currently adjacent to you. Now, that is good, but the main reason they are doing this is because that has unlocked the ability to get King's Revenge at some point in the future. This is one of the stronger cards they have in their deck, especially for defeating the ships. Uh, it looks like Robin Hood did great in the first semester, but they are having a hard time putting together enough damage to defeat those ships, and they're worried about losing their lead. King's Revenge says you can do three damage at range three, and you can pay two money to deal two damage to an enemy up to two spaces away, and you can do this two times. So they could upgrade this one and get it to the spot where it can actually defeat ships as well. Again, Robin has a great lead, but that could easily evaporate if they are not able to keep up in the ship defeating game. Well, they can take one more Charisma card, and that could be Vanish or Arrow Interact. Arrow Interact says it's an interact action at range 4, and you can pay money to increase that range at a rate of 1 to 1. And Vanish says you cannot be attacked this turn, period, and you could spend 5 coins to discard this card from your row to clear up that spot. Now, they think this is a good idea. They have more points than anybody, so they figure they are a prime target to be attacked by ships, so they like the idea of being able to stop that damage from coming in. So this will go into their hand, and they don't actually have any upgrades to use. Well, Robin is done, and that means we are now coming to the end of the second semester. The first thing that we have to do is figure out who is going to be the professor's favorite, and it looks like Red actually has less victory points than we do. So that means Red is going to be the professor's favorite, and now it's time for an enemy turn. Oops, I just realized that these do actually have to be shuffled back when we start the semester, so let's go ahead and give these a shuffle. And now we can draw one card for each of these stacks because we have Lilliputs, castles, as well as ships out there on the map. To start, it looks like the Lilliputs are going to attack at a range of three. 
But when we look out here, none of these Lilliputs are within range 3 of any of the Legends, so they are not going to deal their 2 damage each. Next up, the castles are going to attack at a range of 3 and deal 6 damage. And in this case, Robin Hood is going to be attacked. They have not interacted with this castle, and they are within 3, so they are going to take 6 damage. At least that would be the case, but remember they played Sneak, and that says if you are attacked during this turn, you reduce each attack's damage by 2, and this is still in effect even though it was discarded from the stamina row later on in that turn. So Robin will take 4 damage, bringing them from 191 down to 187. Finally, the ships are going to move one space and then attack at a range of two, and they will deal four damage. Red is currently the teacher's pet, so they can decide how these ships are going to move before they do attack. One thing Red does have to keep in mind is if multiple legends are within range, then the enemy will attack the legend with the least number of points. So they certainly don't want to put themselves in range, but unfortunately they don't have a way to get out of range of this ship. They can't move it up because that is an island space, and they can't move it into this figure spot where Robin Hood is, so they can move it backwards, but they are still within that range of two. None of these other ships can actually be put into range to hit any of their opponents, so then unfortunately for Red, they are going to be hit by four damage from this ship here, which means they are going to lose four points, and that will bring them from 136 down to 132. It appears that was bad planning for them to end their turn over here. They should have ended it on a different spot in the water. Now that the enemy turns are done, we could spawn new enemies, but at this point in the game, I think I'm going to stop playing through the game. Uh, just like we've seen before, these cards dictate the number that we spawn and who gets to spawn them down here on the board. After spawning new enemies, we would then discard our sequences, then we could discard any cards we want to from our hand, and then draw back up to six, and then move into the next round of the game, and we would continue to play like this until four rounds have happened during this second semester. Once we finish those four rounds, we will then check the objective for the second semester. Remember, this one has players needing to drop off at least three ships on land, which means you have to defeat them and then walk back onto one of these spots to then drop those ships off. When you do this, you gain eight points each, and if you haven't dropped off at least three by the end of the semester, you lose 30 victory points. After we check all objectives, the final thing that we do for scoring is all players will get one point for every two coins they have left over, and then the player who has the most victory points will be the winner. Well, at this point, I do believe I've taught just about all of the rules to the game, and that means this tutorial is coming to a close. I hope that you enjoyed learning how to play Legend Academy, and I'd love to hear what your favorite parts were about this game down below in the comments, if you don't mind. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.